the host of uh, World Report on CBC Radio, looking at some of the video and some of the images we have seen of this attack so far and any indications you get in those as to who might be responsible. Certainly authorities, Heather, will be looking at who these two are and try to get them before they carry out potentially another attack. We don't know what's in their mind. What we do know are some of the things they did. From that video, we can tell that these are, this is not the first time these guys have handled weapons. They look like they're experienced. They may well have killed before. We can't know that, certainly. But there's always the question about whether ISIS-inspired people, people who have fought with ISIS and returned to their, their homelands, may carry out an attack. It looks like this, that could be the case this time. Not, not, no confirmation of that. But one thing I take is that video, after they've shot the police officer point blank, in the head without stopping. They continue moving, turn back towards the car. One of them holds a finger up like this. Now that's a symbol that we have seen a lot of ISIS fighters use on the battleground. Could be coincidence, might not be. That's one thing that, that triggers a potential link to ISIS for me. Uh, another is just how well they are, how calm and controlled they are. There's also the, the likelihood that Charlie Hebdo had police protection, that there was a, a marked or unmarked police car in front of this um, facility, as there has been for many, many years, and that their first target was likely that police car before going inside into that editorial meeting and killing people. Some suggestion from at least uh, one newspaper, one report, that they called out names of individuals, mm -hmm. that they were hyper-targeted in who they were looking for. Press day for the magazine today, so the most important people were there at that site, in those offices, and as you say, uh, at close range for the attackers. When you say they called out names, as many of the reports indicate, what we're hearing now is that a number of the top people at Charlie Hebdo have in fact been killed, a number of their best cartoonists, the uh, cartoonist and also the editor, Stéphane Charbonnier, who did an interview with our colleague at Radio-Canada and talked just back in December by phone about how he was defending freedom mm. of the press, the magazine's actions in, in uh, depicting a lot of these satirical cartoons, saying we should not give in to terrorist threats, saying he'd never killed anyone with a drawing. Uh, he appears to be one of the victims of this as well. But it all ties into the magazine itself, its um, ethos, if you will, and the mm -hmm. kinds of history it has. They make fun of people. They make fun of everybody. They make fun of French politicians, French elite, anybody in French society, indeed in the world. Anybody who can be made fun of, that's what Charlie Hebdo does. Now. They have done uh, depictions of the Prophet Muhammad many times before, going back uh, into 2008. Certainly in 2011, we saw the firebombing of their offices by someone clearly angered by the depiction uh, of these cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, we know that they kept doing it. One motivation may well have been freedom of the spe of speech. One motivation may have been that they sold more copies when they did that. You know, I don't want to get into that too deeply. What we have today is a tragedy. Twelve people are dead. Others are critically injured. And there is this manhunt on trying to find at least these two individuals and anybody who may have helped them. This is a clearly a coordinated attack. As you've noted, they got in a car, left very quickly, managed to get a good distance away before carjacking another one. Some suggestion that they may have dumped that vehicle as well. They had a clear exit plan. These guys knew what they were doing, knew how how it was going to happen, stayed in control the entire time and executed their plan very, very quickly. And as a result, France at its highest security level possible, a security crisis meeting going on led by the French president, Francois Hollande, as we speak. And we'll bring you all new developments on this story as it continues to unfold. David, thank you very thank much. You.